Welcome to one of the last sessions in this room today. I hope you are not too tired <laughs> for this last session. Uh, let's start uh, with some reports of our experience with uh, the so named uh, Sephard downstream development. Um, we have made in the last couple of years uh, some experience uh, to work with Zephyr in product development and we, that is uh, Tobias and me, Stefan, uh, we come from different companies that not surprise. Um, we worked together uh, for a couple of years to make some medical devices and also connected health systems. Uh, together with uh, Yocto or uh, Sefa technologies. And so all what you see here in this uh, slides is more an example uh, of best practice. We have learned to work with these technologies and uh, at least this is a theme of really about the Sefa en uh, environment. And so as a result of this, uh, we create a project on GitHub that has a public access uh, where you can see all the uh, learnings uh, uh, we, we see here uh, in a public environment. That's the uh, name Bridal. And so uh, we, Tobias and me, we are the maintainers uh, behind this uh, small project. Um, and what it is uh, we will learn today in this session. Um, on the end, uh, with all our experience, uh, we now in the phase uh, that we can uh, make some trainings on our customer side, in-house trainings or online. And uh, that's uh, our effort for the community uh, to try to integrate several technology into medical devices. Um, so, let me start with a short story. Uh, I think a story uh, of your life with Sefer or in the future. Uh, when you come the first time in contact with Sefer, uh, you see a oh, cool thing. Let me play with it. And uh, all of all is start with a documentation and learn what Sefer is and what are the pieces of Sefer to create or uh, start to create your own uh, experience, to create your ideas and uh, some time later you come to the conclusion, oh, it's a cool thing. But on the end, I have made many, many changes on the source code base. Uh, you will have new apps, new drivers, new boards, maybe new tools, whatever subsystems and libraries uh, uh, you need in-house uh, to create your product. And then leads exactly to the old pattern. Uh, you have made a fork of Sefer. <coughs> and uh, to protect your product development for the future, uh, it's not the ideal uh, situation at this point and you are looking for any kind that bind all these things together. Uh, I have named it your kite line and uh, what you need on a real kite is on the end any point where you bind all together. That's the reason why we name Bridal this project and on the end what Bridal will be for you is an example, exactly a separate downstream development example, uh, where you can learn what is the best practice or what is the thing you will need at least to start your product development in a professional environment. So the background to come to this conclusion uh, was uh, was a story uh, we have uh, hold in a talk on Tuesday. 
uh, Tobias had a, uh, uh, a talk about how I feel love in uh, <laughs> fall in love with Sefer. And uh, there is one important conclusion in this talk, that uh, when you start a professional product development uh, with open source components, uh, you will need more architectural efforts uh, beside your system architecture. Uh, that means you need any environment or infrastructure for knowledge base management and also for the collaboration management. And let me sort these three parts a little bit in a other order. Uh, what we have made with Bridal was to start with the collaboration side. Uh, you will see in this talk uh, some ideas and best practice how to come to uh, a collaboration with uh, the community or with other parts in your product development, contributors uh, or customers, end customers. And uh, that leads on the end uh, to a, a really, really fancy uh, project logistic on GitHub that uh, explain uh, the uh, loosely coupling uh, from your downstream environment to the upstream uh, environment uh, to Sefer. And also you can see then on the end that this is a tool for you to create your own life cycle or release management. And for the architectural perspective, uh, that is exactly this point where you uh, create your QA environment to fulfill any kind of uh, regulatory um, efforts or requirements. Uh, here, for example, uh, the norm from the uh, medical environment. And the second point is the knowledge base management. Uh, you will see an idea uh, how you can create more than only a single document from the software environment. Uh, you will create your own code base, you will create your own product and uh, application, and so that have to document in the same manner as Sephiroth do. And so uh, we have a best practice uh, integrate that split your documents into different perspectives. That's the beginning today, and that can be extended to any kind of perspectives for any kind of domains, for example, test environments, test reports, test specifications, or here, reflected to the architectural environment, the traceability. And yes, on the end, you will create your system, your product, so you need a system architecture level, and uh, that's a, a most important effort uh, made by the Zephyr community that you are, will be able to create such kind of downstream development that you found the exit or entry points to extend the framework itself, the tooling, the tool environment uh, provided by Zephyr and also the code base. So let me start with a little bit of history where we come with this uh, example project. Uh, yes, we have made some uh, projects for the medical environment and uh, any time in 2020, uh, we have the first contact uh, with the Nordic uh, SDK environment and Nordic has made exactly that what we have missed. And so uh, we start to extract exactly that point that is important for our product development and also what we can split out uh, to provide a template and blueprint for the community. Uh, that was the idea and in spring 2021 uh, we have a first prototype of, the pro uh, of the, our project and um, in summer uh, we was on the point that we need more collaboration environment uh, to work with students uh, for teaching or with other companies uh, in the same level for product pre uh, preparation. And so we create this uh, virtual company, uh, the TIAC Systems, and integrate all our uh, ideas under this uh, organization on GitHub. 
And when you are looking for on GitHub or use the links in this uh, slides online, then you uh, will land on exactly this point where you can see what we've done in the last two years. Um, on the end, where we are today, uh, we are happy to say that uh, our bridal project is exactly on the same uh, release point where Sapphire is. Uh, we have not introduced any kind of new versioning. Uh, that is, uh, the reason is uh, the better orientation for uh, external partners uh, where we are. And so, uh, in the time being until today, uh, we create some more documentations over, uh, over our development model and uh, um, contribution workflow so that uh, potential uh, contributors uh, have an orientation or where, you, uh, where they can ask uh, what to do uh, to help us or us together. And on the uh, latest version, we have started some feasibilities. Uh, that is a really important thing. We can talk, maybe uh, have a talk in the, um, on the next conference next year uh, to integrate an architectural model to use more and more the device tree abstraction to create uh, system models so that we can change hardware components, um, processor boards, and so on. That is more the uh, idea that uh, uh, Tobias has talked on Tuesday. So you should uh, have a look on these slides. Uh, and then later uh, have a look on the documentation in our Brightle project, uh, project so that you can have an entry point for the abstraction. So, on the end, let me start with the project logistic. We know we need any kind of collaboration tool, and over the years, on the end, we come to this conclusion uh, where you can see on the orientation for you uh, some important workers, GitHub workers. Uh, in the middle is one, and on the upper side is one. The upper side one is the first point where we can uh, sure that we are loosely decoupled from Sefer. Uh, but important is loosely. Uh, we have a synchronization uh, of our own mirror uh, only uh, every two hours or about. And when we see we need some quick changes on the uh, code base of Sefer, uh, this worker uh, makes our rebasing automatically. And when this will fail, we got emails that we have to do some manually. So that is important because uh, Sefer is a dynamic project and uh, it grows up with new ideas and we will capture all these new ideas in our own product development. Uh, and so we can be safe that we catch this all, uh, but on some points uh, we need uh, some Bruce force uh, changes or we need some uh, backports or we need some uh, reductions of uh, uh, test fixtures, whatever. And the second really important uh, task uh, here in this diagram is uh, our bridal worker that on the end is a rest workspace uh, every time. Uh, when we uh, made our own pull requests and also it's a nightly protection uh, all the major releases we will maintain uh, uh, will run every night with QA tests. The QA tests uh, are reduced of a minimum. It's a virtual project but on the end uh, we have created the infrastructure we would need in an exactly uh, we would need exactly in a product environment you see on this side, uh, we have a self-hosted uh, GitHub action runner uh, on a Raspberry Pi with real hardware on it. Uh, our own reference uh, system, the Tiag MacPy. And every night uh, we uh, run the um, architectural uh, test suite for ARM. 
And so we see, oh, the basic is good enough that we can go on. And on the other side is a really important thing we see soon in the next slides. Uh, that's our documentation store. And this documentation store uh, will be provided with each pull request or um, major releases with new artifacts uh, sorted by versions. So that a doc set of, from, of different documents uh, will be held also for the history for each past versions. Quick look on our hardware in the loop, that's real. Uh, th uh, exactly the next gen, uh, we work on an improvement on this. Uh, the current is too slow uh, to work exactly um, on every pull request in, in a good power that we can make more test suites inside. So um, here you have only an impression uh, what is possible um, on the end, and that depends exactly on your product environment. Uh, hit the uh, maker boards on the upper side and uh, place in mind your own product on this point, and you have a hardware in the loop. Uh, we create uh, until the next uh, year uh, new um, definition that we can use uh, modern uh, systems like uh, LabGrid to integrate uh, scaled hardware environment uh, to the GitHub environment. And the other slot was our uh, deployment environment for the um, websites, for the documentation. Uh, that's a decoupled system, complete decoupled system from the GitHub environment. It's a standalone uh, web server within monitor. The monitor will uh, uh, instrumented uh, by the pipeline from GitHub itself and sort in exactly the right uh, position, your documentation you have made on the GitHub site. Um, yes, we have learned in all other sessions uh, that uh, you need a REST manifest for such kind of development. That's only a short impression uh, what Bridal uh, gives you. Bridal comes with its own REST um, yeah, uh, manifest. And uh, please have a look on the online slides. There are uh, some more detailed information uh, what you can do. Uh, but on the end, our uh, own manifest uh, declares your software structure, so software configuration management uh, is fulfilled with this. And on the end, uh, this is your build environment on the local place and also on the uh, CI pipelines. And the second important thing is Bridal is a software module. It's the same situation for other uh, downstream developments. And in this uh, module description, uh, we have added as much as possible entries so that you uh, that we can uh, evaluate all the situation or the best practice uh, uh, we need to create a product with all the features that Safa provides. Um, some words to the document sets. We need it for our own for the knowledge base management. And this document set online uh, provides you with some features uh, you will not see exactly on uh, the Zephyr documentation site. It starts with the different sets. Um, you see here, you have a complete decoupled uh, documentation for the Zephyr content itself. That is this entry. When I click on it, we land exactly on the current state of the uh, Zephyr documentation. And the same is for our own documentation on the bridal side. This is a complete 
different documents. And the Cephal documentation is maintained by Cephal and the community. And our own bridal documentation is maintained by us. And what we have also do is to introduce a new perspective of documentation. For example, the uh, K-Config uh, symbol library or the device tree bindings. That is more a reference for a programmer. And so all these components are split up from the original uh, Cephal documentation so that you can uh, search again as you know it from the uh, Cephal documentation, but now includes all the uh, symbols we made in our own uh, environment, in the bridal environment. And this is exactly the case for the device bindings. Um, furthermore, we see the APIs are a little bit hidden in the original documentation, and so we split it also the APIs we have our own APIs started, and we can also see the API provided by Cephal. And so that all is split and provided in different perspectives for a given version. And on the end, you have the same environment for all historical versions. And when we go really, really far away, back, you see the documentation is completely different and also uh, the doc sets are slightly different. So, uh, how it works, a quick overview. Uh, we in Bridal have our own documentation uh, folder, it's the same as Cephal, and then we provide our own CMAC magic to create uh, different build environments uh, and that is a point where we split up uh, the different perspectives and the bridal server k-config and device tree environments and then we're processing uh, in the same manner as Cephal with things in Doxygen over the content and on the end uh, we result in different sets of documents. Uh, that's happen for all version we uh, maintain. Uh, is it a release? That, uh, then we have a release tag and it works on this uh, pattern and have we a, a, a branch, then it's the same situation and we have a head on a different uh, released branch and also on the uh, latest, greatest uh, um, documentation that reflects the main branches of Cephal and Bridal. Uh, let me show some artifacts, only a few artifacts. Uh, what, it, what is possible uh, in a downstream environment. Uh, really interesting is uh, that you are able to extend your REST command environment and also the CMAC extension. Yes, we know Cephal provides you with some nice tools uh, in, on the CMAC level and also on the REST level. And uh, with the current state, uh, you have no problem to create new boards, new subsystem and so on, application development and so on. But what is not really uh, knowing about the uh, other tools that you can also extend uh, the best command environment and the CMAC. And let me start with the CMAC for understanding what we provide with uh, Bridal is a little bit more extension in the, bo uh, in the boilerplate uh, sequence. So why we do this? Yes, uh, we try to create uh, a blueprint for medical products. And so in this environment, uh, you will need some fixed tool versions because uh, the most of uh, uh, medical developers have to fix the versions because they have a validated tool. Uh, maybe they need not the Cephal SDK, uh, more a validated tool from, uh, uh, made by ARM, for example. And so we need some prepared setups, what is required to build the bridal project. And also we made some checks if this description is also valid uh, 
found on your uh, build environment. And so the working behind this is uh, really simple. Uh, all applications were looking for Sefer, and uh, Sefer provides a uh, CMake uh, config uh, package for this, and this entry is a default um, uh, sequence uh, to set up the Sefer boilerplate. And before this has happened, uh, Sefer itself looking in all submodules, uh, in all Sefer modules, uh, if there are any kind of a Sefer build configuration environment. Um, when this happened, uh, for example, here in our Bridal, we inject some uh, new CMake modules that process our requirements, our version checkups, uh, guards for the toolchain, and then Sefer goes on with the uh, uh, rest of the boilerplate setup, and so you can be safe that uh, your application has the right environment to build for a medical device. Um, there are some more features. Uh, please have a look on the online presentation. There are some more slides what Bridal will provide in the future for this or what currently is really working. Uh, behind this magic, uh, we have also some protection to create our uh, document sets. Uh, on the end, We have started uh, to create our own REST command uh, because one of the uh, CMake uh, integration in Bridal is that CMake tries to provide an its own CMake package so that you can later create a freestyle or freestanding application uh, looking, not looking uh, for Sephir because looking for Bridal. And uh, then Bridal does all the job to set up uh, the right boilerplate uh, to create your application against a workspace that is Bridal and not Sefer alone. So, on the end, yes, uh, we create for, uh, for preparation on this uh, our own command so that uh, REST can be used as a meta tool to export the Bridal CMake package in your uh, home space. And uh, the goal behind this is when we have a quick look on the implementation, uh, that here, this is a common case um, when you start with your own command, that you need a uh, constructor, a command line parser, and a runner. And in the implementation of the runner, you stumbled over this line and see, oh, now I need a runner that calls CMake, and exactly that is uh, always implemented in the Zephyr environment. And what we do here, that is a good example for you, maybe. Uh, we try to avoid reinvention of a real what is rolling since years. And so what we need on this point is to extend our search path on Python uh, so that we can import the original functional implementation of the run CMake method. And the trick behind this is a new feature in REST, maybe since last summer, uh, that we can add besides the uh, path information where Sefer live, also our own key value pairs uh, for a hint for our own trampoline code that we can uh, combine a search path on the end that under Sefer script rest commands will live the original implementation of our uh, of the Sefer uh, functionality to run CMake. So uh, the solu solution on the end is uh, to go over two different decorators on the Python environment uh, the one decorator uh, looking for the right syspath uh, content, extends the syspath. That will happen on the only ones on this line here. And uh, the second uh, decorator uh, will, be, will be added or fixed 
the runtime environment uh, for the uh, for the Python scripts uh, that you have a global symbol to the to the original um, uh, method in the server environment, and on the end, your implementation looks similar as to the beginning, but now you only need to add one decorator, and this what we see here is exactly the same uh, notation uh, of the uh, REST command extension in Cepher, when Cepher made a Cepher export. Now we have a bridal export, and the uh, only ex extension is this um, decoration uh, magic, so that we can reuse uh, the original implementation to call a CMake uh, a command uh, behind the scene, as Cepher do. Yeah, here is only a quick overview because uh, we know that there is an example application uh, in the Cepher project, how you can start with the downstream application and uh, development. That's okay for beginning, and when you only uh, will play with Cepher uh, with a freestanding environment or your own downstream uh, development, you can do this. On the end, uh, Bridal have tried to extend the functionality of such kind of example to a more professional and product, productive downstream uh, project. So the red label things uh, is more or less the, uh, the features you will get when you uh, study the bridal source code. And yes, for you, it's an offer for you. You can also start quickly with, um, uh, with Bridal itself. We have a getting started page. There you can see uh, how should I set up, install the source code and uh, make a quick hello world. Uh, that's a common case, similar as with, uh, if you would like to uh, start with Cepher itself. You need uh, your uh, tool chain, you need your host tools. Uh, you need a Python virtual environment, get your code uh, uh, through the uh, REST manifest file, and uh, you made some uh, extensions in your CMake environment with the experts, and on the end, you can start with a quick hello world. And But what will be new when you do this, you see that uh, Cepher will notify it's there and Bridal. And uh, Bridal also say, hey, I'm happy. I found exactly the version of the SDK you will need. Um, that is a new feature uh, that only Bridal provides. Uh, reflected on your ideas for product development, that is exactly this uh, was a medical uh, developer would need. On the end, a short summary uh, where you can identify what a Suffer Downstream project is. It has, your project has a REST manifest, exactly this manifest that defined your software structure. Uh, your project will be a Suffer module so that you can edit your exit or entry points for the Suffer tool framework. Uh, at least you will create your own kconfig and cmake environment and maybe a little bit more fancier uh, as you need. And if required, you edit your own REST commands in a similar case as we have done with the example with the export. Um, so that's why we say Bridal is a little bit more as an example, as a standard example. Uh, but this is also the reason why we uh, release it in public as soon as possible, so that other people have a big picture what is on the end possible with the Cephas uh, tool landscape, so that you can uh, come in sooner in your own professional uh, workflow. A short highlight. I will notify you, we have some of our own boards. Some boards of this are not yet uh, supported by Cepher, so 
that was a good place uh, to start with uh, such kind of boards. Um, for example, the uh, Lotus uh, from Seed Studio. Um, that is for us exactly the plan to qualify new ideas. And later in this year, we start to integrate it uh, uh, in the server upstream. And also we have started with some uh, tests uh, of new strategies uh, to come in uh, with some architectural uh, ideas uh, to play with the, with the tool landscape from uh, Zephyr that is behind the Seed Studio Groove interconnected shields. Yeah, we have our own application tests, APIs and so on. And yeah, we have also a l much full list <laughs> of things to do in uh, sorted in. Um, when you see some interesting uh, points here, come to us talk with us, uh, you can arrive us over GitHub or Discord. Yeah, I have to say thank you for your attention and would more take over to you if there are any questions. Questions from the chat, so. Yeah, thank you.